Imagine if every college student had a personal website which would allow others to gain an idea of who they are. How would they express their identity through this website? Take someone who was born in Indiana, has lived their whole lives in Indianapolis and currently goes to college at Indiana University. They may perhaps have a somewhat intuitive website and a pretty straightforward section describing themselves. On the other hand, how would the same website look for someone born in Morocco whose mother is French, whose father is a diplomat and has lived in five different countries? Uh, my story begins my act before my actual birth. Um, my mom is Equatorian, my dad is Brazilian. They met in Germany, then I was born there. A few months later, we moved to Brazil for seven years. Uh, afterwards, we moved back to Germany for three years, followed by a move to Pamplona and Rotor Spain, where we lived. Uh, I lived nine years before coming here to Madrid. Um, I've lived here for four years now, and I, in between, in this last period, I've been to the US for, for several months. The reality is that identifying, describing, and understanding one's identity is never straightforward. The notion of identity is a complex one and perhaps cannot be viewed as a single and unified self. Instead, we operate using multiple shifting identities and this notion of self-identity becomes increasingly complicated the more one interacts with the external world. My parents are from Brazil. I was born in Peru, lived there two years, and then I went to Switzerland three years, then Bulgaria two years, then Brazil two years, then Dominican Republic two years, then Portugal three years, then Ghana two years, and now Spain three years. I feel I belong to many different places and I feel I belong to many different cultures and I'm identified as such. I think it wouldn't be accurate to say that, that I just come from one culture, just from Brazil, because I've been exposed to so many different cultures and I think they all factored in and making me the person I am. Michael Hecht, among the pioneers of scholars on identity, claimed that identity formation is a complex, multi-layered notion of the self that is interwoven and constructed between shifting dialectical contradictions as we interact with our surroundings. But it is clear that identity formation differs between monocultural and multicultural individuals. I am from Minnesota in the United States and I have lived in Minnesota my whole entire life and this is the first time I have ever lived anywhere besides Minnesota, specifically in Spain. I'm, I'm a dual citizen. I'm French and American. My father's French, my mother's American, but I was born in the U.S. And I've lived all over, starting with Nigeria, Chile, South Africa, France, UAE, and now Spain. Multiculturalism is... Um, I don't actually know what multiculturalism is. Just last summer, I spent uh, my summer in, in Wyoming backpacking and it was with a group of uh, Americans and it was frustrating at times because when I would tell them that I was French American and that I had lived all over, they couldn't grasp the idea. They were, they were kind of confused as to how that could be that I was one, a dual citizen and then two, lived all around the world. And looking back at, back at the experience, I think my, my inclusion into the group may not have been as successful had I not been part American. People that are multicultural get to pick what they like from certain cultures and put that into one thing that they then um, define as their own culture. Multicultural individuals do not consider difference as something destructive. Rather, differences construct their hybridity. A lesson I've learned throughout the years is that perception and reality do not always match. Uh, there is a tension between them. And it is that the place you are not always feels the place you belong to. But then when you go to those places that you think you belong to, at the same time you feel that the place where you were is also part of you. So you do not belong 100% anywhere, but at the same time you belong to all of these places. 
some of the cognitive struggles that I personally face uh, from being multicultural um, are mainly the, the ones of not really identifying myself 100% with any culture. And I think that's a struggle because a lot of the times like the way people act in a culture or just like the way to communicate um, varies from culture to culture and not really being fully from one culture ends up affecting, affecting you because um, sometimes people might not really understand you or you might not understand them and that kind of gets in the way. Moving in between being an insider and an outsider sometimes brings a friction in your personality that makes you feel uh, different and outside of any group. But there are some experiences at some point that uh, make you realize uh, that being different is actually something positive. For these individuals, hybridity represents coexistence through giving up the desire for a pure origin. Hybridity suggests a reconceptualization of home and introduces comfort in homelessness, where one has no culture of origin. Hybridity retains a sense of difference and tension between two cultures, but without assuming hierarchy. One does not dominate the other. And this continued exposure to intercultural adaptation allows multicultural individuals to attain a greater sense of interpersonal sensitivity. It is clear that multicultural individuals form an especially complex communication system defining themselves and their interactions with others. While the question, where are you from, may be straightforward for some, it may take a different meaning for others.